Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro and welcome to this another episode of DP600 tutorial series. DP600 is Microsoft Fabric Certification and in this part we are going to talk about Medellin architecture. We are living in a data driven world. That means the need to harness vast and diverse data sources is very critical for any kind of business. In Microsoft Fabric, Lake House is built as a combination of data lakes and data warehouses, which offers an ideal platform to manage and analyze this data. The Medellin architecture has become a standard across the industry for Lake House based analytics. So let's get to know what is this Medellin architecture. Well, guys. The Medellin architecture brings structure and efficiency to your lake house environment. Now, if you will look at the snapshot on your screen very carefully, you would get to know if you are going to start from your left hand side, you would get all the data sources. As you progress from branch to gold layer, the data quality increases. And at last you can consume the data for your data science, machine learning, or maybe for some another particular purposes, as well as data visualization, then you can use the different tools over there. So the data lake house in Fabric are built on the Delta Lake format, which natively sports ACID properties. And if you're coming from the SQL background, you know what is ACID. ACID properties are like atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability transactions. Within this framework, this Medellin architecture that you are looking at your screen is recommended data design pattern, which is used to organize data in lake house logically. And why we are doing that? We are doing this to improve the data quality as it goes through the different layers. The architecture typically has three layers, as you can see, bronze, silver, gold, but you can also customize it in case you have staging environment as well or some another uh, different layer that you want to introduce, you can do that. But basically in the bronze layer, you are gonna have your raw data. In the silver layer, you are gonna have your validated data. And in the gold layer, you are gonna have your enriched data. Each of these layers representing higher data quality levels. Some people also call it a multi-hop architecture, meaning that the data can move between layers as needed. Now, let's get to know what are these different layers a bit more in detail. We will try to understand this Merillion architecture format. That means what are these bronze, silver and gold layer a bit more in detail. So the very first is bronze layer. As I mentioned, the bronze layer is also known as your row layer for this Medellin architecture. It's the very first layer of the lake house. Lake house is a combination of your Delta Lake plus your data warehouse. Basically, it has the both the properties and it serves the both purpose. That's why we are calling it a lake house. The bronze layer is a landing zone for your all the data, whether it's structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. The data is being stored in its original format and there's no change gonna be happen over there. That means you are not gonna make any changes in the bronze layer. So the data you're gonna get from all the different sources, you're gonna just put it as it is over there. Silver layer is the layer where you are gonna validate your data or also known as the validated layer. It's the second layer of this architecture that is Medellin architecture. It is where you will validate and refine your data. Now, if you're gonna ask me what are the typical activities in a silver layer, well, that can be combining and merging of the data, enforcing data validation rules, like you are gonna remove the nulls or you are gonna remove the duplicate values from there. The silver layer can be thought of as a central repository across an organization or teams where data is stored in a consistent format and can be accessed by multiple teams. Now, you should also remember that in the silver layer, you are cleaning your data enough so that everything is in one place and ready to be refined and modeled in the gold layer. Now, third layer or the last layer is gold layer in this Medellin architecture. But please do remember, as I mentioned previously, there can be other layers as well. So it depends on the organization to organization if they would like to customize this Medellin architecture. This layer is basically your enriched layer. This is the third and the last layer of the lake house. In the gold layer, data undergoes further refinement to align within specific business and analytics need. For example, if I'm gonna talk about one particular department, finance department, then according to the need of that business or that particular department, we can customize this code layer. This could involve aggregating data to a particular granularity, such as daily, hourly, or enriching it with external information. 
Once the data reaches this gold stage, it becomes ready for use by downstream teams, including analytics, data science, or MLOps. You can also further customize it, as I told you, but now let's see how the data moves across the layers in Microsoft Fabric. Moving data across these Medallion layers refines, organizes, and prepares it for the downstream data activities, such as your data analytics or creating reports using Microsoft Power BI. Within Fabric Layer House, there's more than one way to move data between layers. This is going to ensure that you can choose the method that works best for your team. Now, there are a couple of things that needs to be considered when deciding how to move and transform data across these layers. You should ask certain questions to yourself. For example, how much data you are working with? How complex are the transformations you need to make? How often you will need to move data between these, these layers? And what tools are you most comfortable with? Well, in Microsoft Fabric, generally we are going to use the data pipelines. And in the data pipelines, you can have your notebooks or data flows gen 2 that you can use it over there. So note flows, notebooks and data flows gen 2 are going to be your best tool over here to transform and move the data. I have already created different videos that are going to explain you how to work with Dataflows Gen 2 and Notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. If you haven't watched those videos, then I request you to go back again and check or watch those videos. Those are going to help you that how you can do that. Over here, we are going to talk about the data orchestration as well. So what is it? Data orchestration refers to the coordination and management of multiple data related processes, ensuring they work together to achieve a desired outcome. The primary tool for data orchestration in Microsoft Fabric would be your data pipelines. And we have already talked about the pipelines. So if you are going to ask me again, what is a pipeline? A pipeline is a series of steps that move data from one place to another. That can be your copy activity, that can be your some transformation, that can be refresh of your Power BI semantic model, etc. Once again, I have created all the videos for pipelines, data flows gen 2, notebooks, etc. So please go back and watch all those videos if you haven't watched it till now. Now let's talk about how you are going to implement a Medellin architecture in Microsoft Fabric. So far you have the solid understanding about the Medellin architecture. What is it? Now there are certain steps that you need to follow which are on your screen right now. The very basic step would be set up the foundation. You have to create your own lake house. If you don't have lake house, then you cannot implement this Medellin architecture basically. So you can use the same lake house for multiple Medellin architecture, or you can use the different one for each one. So it totally depends on you. Previously, I have already explained what is a lake house, how to load the data into lake house, what are the different options we have. Again, if you haven't watched that video, then please go back and watch it again. Second step would be design your architecture. So once you know about this, Medellin architecture, you have understanding. Second, uh, the first step you have completed to set up your lake house. The second step would be to design your architecture. You need to create your own architecture layout, which are going to define your layers and going to determine how data will flow between them. You should ask question, what happens in that layer? For example, you should know in the bronze layer, you are going to ingest just the raw data. In the silver layer, you are going to clean the data and validate it. And in the gold layer, you are going to add additional information if required. Also, you should know what are the different tools that you are going to use over here in different layers. For example, bronze layer. Bronze layer is just your raw data dump. So you can use your pipelines, data flows and notebooks. When you have a silver layer where you have to clean the data, for example, removing duplicates or null values, etc. In that case, you can use data flows or notebooks. And in the gold layer where you are going to consume the data, you are going to use SQL analytic endpoints or semantic model. For example, your data warehouse over there. Now coming to the third point where you have to ingest data into bronze. So determine how you will ingest the data in your bronze layer. As I mentioned, you can use your pipelines, data flows or notebooks for, notebooks for that. You may also need to transform the data and load to a silver layer. So data going from your bronze to silver, it needs a transformation. And how you can transform the data? Again, you can use the data flows gen 2, where you can apply certain transformations and you can also use in the pipelines different kinds of activities to transform that data and then you can load it using the pipelines itself. Now, coming to the point of generating a gold layer, you need to determine how you will generate your gold layer, what it will contain and how it will be used. So the gold layer is where you will model your data for reporting using a dimensional modeling. That means you have to establish your fact and dimension tables. 
also you have to create a relationship between them you can have multiple gold layers for different audiences or domains as well if you would like to for example you might have a gold layer for a finance team and a separate gold layer for your sales team depending on your needs you might also use a data warehouse as your gold layer as well as i just mentioned a couple of minutes back so if you would like to know more about the data warehouse then please go and watch the previous video where i have explained it clearly what is the data warehouse and how you are going to load the data in that Lastly, in Microsoft Fabric, you can transform your data using data flows or notebooks and then load into a gold delta table in the lake house. You can then connect the delta lake table using SQL Analytics endpoint and use SQL to model your data for reporting. I have already demoed all the data warehouse, data lake house, etc. in our previous videos, so you should watch them out. Now, the last point over here is enabling downstream consumption. Now you have to determine how you will enable downstream consumption of your data. As I mentioned, we can use SQL endpoints to connect with your lake house or with your data warehouse. And then you can also manage the different workspace permissions over there. That's how you are going to implement this enablement of downstream consumption. So these were the six steps which are going to help you to implement your Medellin architecture in Fabric. Now we are going to move further and here we are going to discuss about consideration for managing your lake house. Lake house is a combination or blending of your delta lake and your own data warehouse. There are basically two main points that you need to consider. First would be that how you are going to secure your lake house. Always there are a couple of considerations to keep in mind when managing your lake house, including as I mentioned, how you are going to secure lake house and how you are going to perform the continuous integration and delivery. Securing your lake house by ensuring that only authorized users can access the data. That should be your number one priority. I always talk about the data, then I always talk about the security. When your data is there, you must secure it. Otherwise, there is no use of any kind of operation that you are going to perform over there. In Microsoft Fabric, you can do this by setting up permissions at the workspace level or item level. Now, workspace permission control access to all items within a workspace, while item level permissions control access to a specific item within that particular workspace and could be used when you are collaborating with colleagues who aren't in the same workspace or they only need to access to a single and specific item. Now, there are a couple of points that you should consider furthermore, like securing the security and access consideration, gold layer access control, who's going to access it, silver layer utilization and bronze layer access control. So these are a couple of points that you should also consider. For example, if we talk about the gold layer access control, you should restrict access to gold layer for read only purpose only, emphasizing the importance of minimal permissions because it's your production. Now. When we talked about the silver layer utilization, you need to decide whether users will allow to build upon the silver layer, balancing flexibility and security. Lastly, bronze layer access control. You need to restrict access to the bronze layer for read-only purpose, emphasizing the importance of minimal permission. So gold layer and bronze layer, almost same. Silver layer, you need to see whom you are going to allow access to what to do. Now it comes to CI-CD. Microsoft Fabric workspaces can be integrated using GitHub. So there's a GitHub integration already there, but it's still in preview. Microsoft has already introduced it. So I'm going to create another video some other time that how you can do the GitHub integration and how you can manage CI CD over there. That's going to help you to work with this one. However, apart from CI CD, you can also create the deployment pipelines in Microsoft Power BI that also you can use to move items from one workspace to another one. Now it's time for your homework guys. I have already explained how to work with the data flows, data warehouse, data lake house, etc. So in this video, I'm not going to do any demo exercise for you. This time you have to do exercise yourself. I'm going to provide you Microsoft exercise link in the description section. So please do check that out. In case I'm receiving more than 10 comments that people are not able to do that or they are not able to follow it, I'm going to create another video for that. So please don't forget to put your comment in the comment section so that I can get to know, okay, you need help over there. Also, you can let us know anytime if you have any question or concerns. Till then guys, keep learning and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed it till yet. Also, do share the content with your friends and your family members or your colleagues so that they can also take advantage of these learning materials and they can grow in their career. Till then, deep dive into the world of this data, continue your learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.